Good afternoon. I'm Jillian Black, and welcome to the Department of Family and Support Services New Arrivals Shelter Operations of City Owned or City Leased Facilities RFP re release. Joining me today will be Natalia Santian and William Lohr, members of the program team for New Arrivals Shelter Operations. Just a few housekeeping rules. Due to the volume of participants, everyone has been placed on mute. Please submit questions via the question box and we will respond to questions at the midpoint and at the end of the presentation. Please use the question box to notify us of any technical issues. Please be advised that this webinar is being recorded. A copy of the recording will be posted on the DFSS YouTube channel with a link to the recording and a PDF of the Power slide, PowerPoint slides will be posted to the DFSS website as well. This will take up to five business days. Please be advised that DFSS retains the right to share a list of registrants to this webinar along with their contact and organizational information at our discretion. To go over the agenda, we just went over the welcome and introductions. We will now go over the purpose, background, information about the scope and program description, selection criteria, the timeline, technical assistance for applicants and e-procurement, and then another round for questions. Now I'll be turning it over to the program team who will explain the RFP and what we're looking for. Thank you, Jillian. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Natalia Santillan, Project Manager for New Rivals Division. Um, the purpose of the RFP, um, DFSS is really seeking proposals for the operation of emergency shelters for new arrivals who are experiencing homelessness in Chicago. DFSS is looking to continue to provide a safe and accessible place to stay for new arrivals. We want to continue to coordination with state and local agencies and service providers to connect new arrivals to needed services and supports. We'd like to continue supporting new arrivals and moving towards stable housing and know that within this RFP, emergency shelters will be located in six existing city owned or city leased locations that are currently being operated as shelters. Do know that this RFP has been updated since the initial DFSS Homeless Services New Arrival Shelter Operation RFP, which was issued back in August of 2023. This current RFP release covers sites for which DFSS either made no award under the prior RFP or which have been newly added to the new arrival shelter system since the prior RFP was issued. Next slide. Uh, and for the current state of affairs, in collaboration with the Emergency <clears throat> Operations Command, DFSS is currently operating uh, 18, I'm sorry, this says 23, it's 18 new arrivals emergency shelters across the city. Shelters operate in a variety of facilities, such as former Chicago Public School buildings, City Colleges of Chicago facilities, and large congregate and hotel motel type buildings across Chicago. The EOC provides some supplies at new arrival shelters, including bedding, which includes cots and blankets, baby supplies, which could be formula and bassinets, hygiene kits and supplies, which include dental hygiene supplies, soap, shampoo, hand sanitizer, feminine hygiene products, and then other items donated via Amazon donations, which include children's activity kits, shoes, and coats. Um, new arrivals in um, our current shelters can receive housing resettlement support um, so the City of Chicago is working with the I Illinois Department of Human Services, IDHS, to support new arrivals in these emergency shelters in their resettlement effort. While, while current resettlement resources are limited, this collaboration continues to evaluate future resettlement capacity. Shelter operators are a critical partner in these efforts. New arrivals <clears throat> across our sites can also receive access to benefits and community resources. So the city and IDHS have also collaborated with the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights, ICER, to bring community-based organizations into shelter to provide benefits, enrollment assistance, and referrals to other community resources. Okay. For background, um, between August 22 of 2022 and March of 2024, over 36,000 new arrivals have arrived in Chicago. <laughs> 
and many via busing, busing by the state of Texas and other jurisdictions near the southwest border. In response to this ongoing dynamic, the city's Department of Family and Support Services, in collaboration with the EOC, Emergency Operations Center, uh, opened and continues to uh, opened and continues to operate a series of new arrivals emergency shelters. These emergency shelters have largely been staffed by temporary staff. And as shared earlier, DFSS released an RFP in fall of 2023 um, to transition operations for some shelters to delegate agencies. So DFSS and the city of Chicago can seek to improve the new arrivals emergency shelter system across a, a variety of dimensions, including investing in the local workforce and structures of care for long-term sustainability, delivering culturally responsive services, including the integration of historical and current local community context, delivering shelter services that support holistic case management, delivering shelter services that reflect the Chicago continuum of care's COC core values, that includes had the housing first approach, harm reduction, trauma-informed care, and inclusion of persons of lived experience, or PLE, and having their input. Um, priority also includes strategizing with city, state, and community stakeholders on how to unify new, the new arrivals and homeless shelter and rehousing systems. For our target population um, for this RFP, we're looking to serve new arrivals experiencing literal homelessness, and that's in accordance with the hearth definition. Um, that includes adults without children, which could be adult families or single adults of any gender identity. That in also includes adults with children, which is families that may include individuals of any identity. Family units and family shelters must have at least one child under the age of 18, and programs must practice family preservation. The target population demographic information <clears throat> based on those currently in shelter as of March of 18th of this year includes, <clears throat> many new arrivals have come to the US due to economic, political, and or social turmoil in their home countries. Um, in, language in terms of language capacity, 98% are Spanish speaking. The next largest group speaks Haitian Creole. Um, following that, it is Arabic, Portuguese, French, and Russian. Um, for countries of origin, we're seeing 86% of new arrivals come from Venezuela, 6% from Colombia, 2.5 from Ecuador, 1% 1 1 from Haiti, and 1% Peruvian. There are also a small number from other countries in South and Central America, the Caribbean, and Africa. In regards to family composition, around 3,500, we have around 3,500 in adult shelters, about 500 are women, and 3,000 are men, and around 7,400 adults and children are in the family shelters, and that's about 3,700 children and about 3,700 adults. The population we serve also includes those with disabilities, those who identify as LGBTQ+, and survivors of gender-based violence. <clears throat> so the, there are currently six facilities available for operation through this RFP. Um, that is the Elston location, which is located in the West Town community area. Elston serves um, 10,000, I'm sorry, 1,010 in um, beds total that serve single men and single women. Uh, the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, MWRD for short, in the North Park area, um, serving families, um, which is adults with minor children. The Northwestern facility, again, serving families. Uh, Northwestern is located in the West Town area. In the Rogers Park, it's the Super 8 Motel, serves families. Walnut, serving families. They're located in the near, near West Side, alongside West Lake, which also serves single, uh, which serves single men. Do know that if applicants are interested in applying to operate to multiple sites, they must submit a separate application for each facility they propose operating. And now for key program requirements, um, selected delegate agencies are expected to provide safe shelter, meet basic needs, and support the meals provision at each site at the sites um, applied for. Um, under providing a safe shelter environment, shelters must be operated and staffed 24-7 um, with a place to sleep, and they must ensure that they're meeting the provision of basic needs. Uh, a recommended best pack practice for delegates is that there is a 1 to 15 staff to resident ratio. Staff must meet residents' language needs. All case managers must be Spanish speaking. Day-to-day -day shelter staff are encouraged to have Spanish, Haitian, Creole, and Portuguese language skills. Selected delegates must provide security and janitorial services. They must also provide access to showers, toiletries, 
basic clothing items and limited personal storage. And they're also responsible for providing laundry service, service, which either includes conducting laundry service if laundry is available on site or securing a vendor for off-site laundry service. <clears throat> so elected delegates must also support the <clears throat> meals provision for residents, which includes three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Meals are currently provided by one of the city's contracted new arrivals, meals program delegate agencies, shelter operations delegate, Responsibilities include receiving provided meals, ensuring proper food storage, staffing and managing food service during meal times, um, collaboration with new arrivals meals program delegate agency. Um, excuse me. Part of this responsibility also includes collaborating with the program delegate to ensure that all staff of the delegate are involved in the food service. All, all staff involved in food service have the appropriate trainings and certifications. <clears throat> Other key program requirements include the coordination and access to services and resources. Um, the delegate must coordinate with current committed and existing resources, including service providers that are engaged in um, serving the new arrivals population, such as the housing resettlement providers, benefit enrollments teams, and immigration services teams. Um, the delegate must support the residents um, in um, their physical and behavioral health, and that could inc that includes conducting regular health screenings, recommended to include testing for communicable diseases and full access to vaccinations. They must support the implementation of the Chicago Department of Public Health CDPH guidance regarding communicable diseases, including designating and using isolation spaces. They must support the coordination with a medical provider for on-site medical consultations and follow up on a frequent basis. Respondents are encouraged to identify their own healthcare partners. If no partner is identified by the selected delegates, CDPH may identify a designated medical partner. Um, selected delegates must facilitate resettlement via diversion, outmigration, or connection to housing options. Um, they're responsible for coordinating with system-wide efforts on this. Um, they must engage in creative problem-solving conversations with residents at shelter. They must support residents completing housing assessments and must support residents in identifying and navigating other housing options. Delegates must ensure that there's access to case management to ensure that residents are linked to services and community resources to support their resettlement and stability. Um, delegates must identify and utilize a case management system to collect, store, and report case uh, on case management activities. Um, selected delegate must have ongoing coordination with the Emergency Operations Center, the EOC, to provide direct oversight, collaboration, data tracking, and reporting for the entire new arrival shelter system. And they must implement and enforce city-defined policies, such as limited stay or vaccination policies. Under per performance goals and outcomes of this RFP, DFSS does seek to track progress towards achieving, achieving the outcome goals of this program and access to success. DFSS anticipates updating or changing outcomes and outputs of interest, especially as the selected applicants scale up their shelter operations. So some performance indicators may include um, capturing the average length of stay in shelter, looking at the percentage of households being referred to supportive services, looking at the percentage of households being ref 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 referred to housing resources and stable housing, and um, looking at bed utilization rates around the 98, 99%. When metrics have been finalized, DFSS will monitor metrics by race, ethnicity, gender, country of origin, age, and other characteristics to track equity and outcomes and outputs. And so now for the selection criteria overview, I will hand the mic over to my colleague, um, BJ. Thanks, Natalia. Hi, everybody. Um, you'll see William Lohr on the screen. I go by BJ. Uh, I use he, him pronouns, and I am also a project manager here at DFSS with the New Arrivals Mission. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into the selection criteria overview. Um, DFSS will evaluate applications based on the following criteria, community involvement, strength of proposed program, program performance outcomes and quality, organizational capacity, and reasonable costs, budget justification, and leverage of funds. And you can see over here to the top, um, if we can go back just real quick, you can see the, over here to the right, the points that are going to be allocated for each of those sections. Thanks so much. Um, under the community involvement selection criteria, 
Uh, respondents need to demonstrate a clear understanding of the target population, including their needs and challenges. Uh, respondents should demonstrate a commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and access in programming and at all levels of the organization's operations. Um, respondents should have a client and community engagement activities uh, that inform service delivery. And respondents' leadership and agency needs to reflect the diverse pe uh, people of the communities it serves or activity uh, actively engage these communities to better understand them. Under the selection criteria of the strength of proposed program, respondents' proposal to operate um, a safe and decent shelter for the target population should clearly address the program requirements and outcome goals of this RFP. Respondents should have a compelling plan for case management to help connect residents to other services and supports. Uh, respondents will effectively coordinate with agencies providing services already in place for this population. Respondents should have an effective approach to addressing interpersonal conflict and crises on site. Respondents should have a staffing plan that is specific to the needs of the selected site, clearly supports maintaining a safe environment, addressing the target population's needs, and setting them up to assume operations within 30 days of contract award. For the selection criteria of performance management and outcomes, respondents need to demonstrate evidence of strong past performance against desired outcome goals in this RFP and performance metrics of the RFP and or other notable accomplishments uh, in providing services to the target population. Respondents should have an effective method for tracking bed utilization and maintaining high utilization. Respondents should have experience collecting and utilizing data to understand and address inequities in client outcomes. And respondents should have the relevant client and case management systems and processes needed to securely collect, score, store, and report on key participant performance data. Two more selection criteria uh, uh, categories to go. This one is organizational capacity. Under this category, respondents need to have specific experiences and capabilities relevant and app applicable to the shelter operations. Respondents should have specific experiences and capabilities relevant and applicable to servicing the target population, including the meeting of needs of non-English speaking populations. Respondents should have the capacity along with relevant policies and procedures to scale up to safely operate the shelter within 30 days of receiving an award letter. And lastly, the respondent should have an adequate uh, should have adequate systems and processes to support monitoring program expenditures and fiscal controls. Um, and then the last uh, category of selection criteria is reasonable costs, budget justification, and leverage of funds. Uh, under this category, respondents need to have the cash flow to expend funds prior to reimbursement from the city of Chicago, sufficient to maintain operations at the selected site. And respondents' uh, proposed program costs uh, must be within the bed rate stated in this RFP and should be reasonable given the nature of the services proposed and the proposed budget clearly accounts for all of the program requirements. So combined, those are the five selection criteria categories. Um, some of the attachments that you'll need to include with your RFP, um, please be sure to attach your organization's budget for this program using the provided budget forms. Note that the budget will auto calculate what we consider your per bed rate based on your proposed budget. Please make sure all program requirements are addressed. Lastly, be sure to attach data demonstrating past 12 months of performance. For the evaluation process, you must submit a separate application for each site you would like to propose operating. DFSS will award up to six contracts for the six different sites. Uh, applications will be evaluated on strengths of the proposal and responsiveness to the selection criteria. Failure to submit a complete proposal or respond fully to all requirements may make your submission subject to rejection. Um, the Department of Family and Support Services Commissioner, upon review of recommended agencies, may reject, deny, or recommend agencies that have applied for grants based on previous performance and or area need. 
Of course, DFSS reserves the right to ensure that all mandated services are available citywide and provided in a linguistically and culturally appropriate manner. Looking at the selection timeline, um, currently today we're hosting the pre-proposal webinar. Uh, we have scheduled site visits at all six of the site locations for Wednesday, April 24th, 2024. I'll take a moment to pause and highlight the site visit schedule to the right on the screen. Um, for the site visit schedule, we'll be, we will be uh, visiting the Super 8 Motel in Rogers Park from 9 to 9.45 a.m. Next, we'll be at the MWRD Shelter in North Park from 10.30 to 11.15 a.m. After that, we'll be at Elston in Westtown from noon till 12.45 p.m. After Elston, we'll be at Northwestern in Westtown from 2 to 2.45 p.m. We'll be at Walnut in the near west side from 3 to 3.45 p.m. And lastly, we'll be at Westlake in the near west side from 4 to 4.45 p.m. And again, all of these site visits are happening on Wednesday, April 24th. Um, the due date to submit pre-proposal questions is Monday, April 29th at 11.59 p.m. And then finally, applications will be due May 14th at noon. Um, some information about the anticipated contract terms and funding. The anticipated contract term uh, will be from July 15th through December 31st of 2024. Um, based on need, availability of funds, and contractor performance, DFSS may extend this term up to six times with each extension not to exceed six months. DFSS anticipates providing a 30-day transition period beginning on the date that the selected respondents receive their award letter. And finally, funding uh, anticipated funding per award will be based on a maximum bed rate of $35 per night. Uh, the bed rate equals per bed per day cost to the city. Um, for your budgets, you must use the provided budget forms. Please submit a budget for one year, 12 months of services. Cost category definitions are attached as budget instructions in every RFP. Please be thoughtful and inclusive when developing your budget and apply your program's actual costs. We generally cannot give you more money than what you, for, than what you asked for. Use the reasonable costs question on the application to discuss how you determined the costs reflected in the budget. Um, again, applications are due on May 14th, 2024 at noon central time. And I believe this is last for me, just a piece on budgets and cost proposals. Uh, some of the common errors that we see uh, include, and this is specific to uh, the, the budget documents, um, under the, the fringe benefits line or the fringes line, please make sure to check your calculations. For supplies, supplies, please note that oftentimes applicants will over or under budget. For client assistance, this is an, uh, this is an appropriate and allowable cost, so please don't forget to include it. Put a brief description of the job in the budget document itself if you have not discussed it specifically in your application. Put your budget in the appropriate column. And lastly, show the matching funds that you intend to use. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it back over to Jillian to close us out. Um, before I go into application tips. I'm going to read off a couple of the questions we've received. Um, the first question is from Michael Tantillo. This is Michael from Acidity. Does the bed rate include everything in the RFP? For example, providing medical services and vaccinations. Would we like to answer now or should we provide the answer in the addendum? 
Uh, actually, uh, we can answer this now, but I think um, if we can answer all of the questions at, at the end, I think that would be helpful. But um, the bed rate includes everything related to the shelter operation. So in the RFP, there's a program requirement section. Anything that would uh, incur a cost as part of those requirements would be included in the bed rate. Uh, there, there are partners that uh, DFSS and other uh, city agencies bring into shelter to provide medical services and vaccinations. But otherwise, your proposal and bed rate um, would be inclusive of everything that would incur a cost to meet the requirements of the RFP. Okay. And the second question is, will the city entertain one proposal containing a separate budget for each site, but one overall plan to provide services at all sites? Uh, I'm not sure I fully understand the question, but um, uh, if you are applying to operate more than one site, you have to submit a separate application for the site in which you are proposing to operate. Just to hit that home a little uh, with a additional clarity, um, if I am an agency and I am applying to uh, you know, run or operate two different shelters under this RFP, I need to submit two separate applications with two separate budget documents. Thank you. And now I'll go into um, application tips. Um, the first thing I want to reiterate is to start early on your application and to save often. Um, if you have not done business with the city of Chicago, please reg register into iSupplier as soon as possible. Review the RFP narratives and application questions closely. Remember, they align with the scope and selection criteria. Use the information in the RFP for guidance in formulating your answers. There is a 4,000 character limit, which, it, which includes punctuations and spaces. Each response is allotted 4,000 characters. Remember, do not use the back button on your browser. Again, start early, save often. A couple tips, tips for working in e-procurement. To submit multiple applications for a single RFP, applicants will need to set up a unique user account in our supplier, but all the user accounts can use the same email address. The e procurement system is not capable of submitting more than one distinct proposal per, per associated email address. Therefore, you must use a separate email address for each submittal proposal. You can submit your application and amend it up until the due date of May 3rd, 2024 at 12 noon. Avoid the rush and possible mishaps, mishaps by submitting early. Um, plan on the submission process taking 30 to 60 minutes. Um, please be advised that late applications will not be accepted. Um, for help, you can always reach out to the e-procurement hotline at 312-744-4357. The hotline operates during business hours only, Monday through Friday, 9 through 5. Save off. Jillian, I think um, we, we can't hear you. I think there might be a ch an issue with your connection to your mic. Can everyone hear me? I could hear yeah. you now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, should I go over the, I'll just go over the steps and working in e-procurement again, just for people who couldn't hear me. Um, to submit multiple applications for a single RFP, applicants will need to set up a unique user account in iSupplier, but all of the accounts can, be, can use the same email address. The e-procurement system is not capable of submitting more than one distinct proposal per associated email address. Therefore, you must use a separate email address for each submittal. 
you can submit your application and later amend it up until the due date, which is May 3rd at 12 noon. The rush can be avoided by submitting early. Plan on submission taking at least 30 to 60 minutes. Please be advised, late applications will not be accepted. For help, please make use of the e-procurement hotline at 312-744-4357. The hotline is operates during business hours, which is Monday through Friday, nine through five. Save often and submit early if possible. New agency requirements. Um, applicant must provide articles of incorporation or any amended articles of incorporation. The applicant must submit an IRS affirmation letter this is for non-for-profit agencies or only. This letter must be dated within 60 days of submittal. You can obtain this by calling the IRS directly at 877-829-5500. If you are a for-profit agency, submit your original letter of, from the IRS showing your FEIN number. The applicant must submit a DUNS number as well as the central contract contractor registration. Um, provide a copy of the entity overview page on the sam.gov website. A certificate of good standing letter with the state of Illinois must also be submitted. For technical assistance, there's a link of, to the RFP of interest and training documents under the alert section on our website. For questions, on registration and e-procurement technical assistance for delegate agencies, please reach out to customer support at cityofchicago.org or their phone number at 312-744-4357. Entering responses and accepting amendments. And so the first step for entering a response you must select create quote from the drop down menu in the actions box and click on go. This will take you to the application page where you can get started. If the RFP you are interested in has been amended, you will need to acknowledge and accept the amendment to start or submit a response. To accept the amendment, click on the amendment view amendment history. Step two on how to accept an amendment. To begin the acceptance and acknowledgement process, follow these steps after clicking view amendment history. Number one, click on the document number. Number two, click on the infinity or eyeglass icon to review the amendment changements changed to the RFP. Number three, click on the acknowledge amendments button to acknowledge receipt and understanding of these changes and proceed. By acknowledging the amendment, you are indicating that you are aware of the changes made to the RFP in the amendment. When you get to this screen, click on the I accept box and then click on acknowledge. Then click on yes to indicate that you confirm your acknowledgement of the amendment. Finally, click on the checkbox that you accept the terms and conditions and then click on accept to actually accept them. This is the final step in acknowledging and accepting the amendment. How to submit the actual application. When you are ready to submit, start by saving your draft one last time and then click continue. If you are missing information, you will be given an error message at the top of the page. Usually the error message direct to, usually the error messages direct to something left undone in the application. In the last example, the error message indicated that the lines found under the lines tab had not been filled out. So the system will let you know when you're missing something. So that's um, always helpful. 
In this example, the error is about an unanswered question in the application or requirement section. The quote value refers to your, in this case, missing answer. Once your application is free from errors, you are ready to proceed and submit. At this point, click and continue should put your application into the review and submit phase. This is your last chance to review all your data and confirm that it is accurate. Check your attachments and scroll to the bottom of the screen to see all of your responses. At the bottom of the screen, you will be asked to provide an electronic signature. Be sure to fill in the signature before checking the box. And then you can finally click Submit. Please make sure that you see the submittal confirmation screen. The e-procurement system will send a confirmation email within 24 hours of your submission. Please call or email me if you desire confirmation prior to then. Any questions? I see we have two other questions. Um, are there specific case management certifications required for our case management strategic, strategic plan? Uh, I would ensure that you uh, review the RFP requirements uh, in their entirety and just ensure that in your proposal, uh, you are including any and all requirements listed in, in the RFP related to the case management uh, components. Okay. And the last question is, could you explain the process for multiple applications again? So each application will have to be submitted separately. Yeah, essentially it's one, one application per facility. So if applicant one wants to operate sites one, three, and five, applicant one would be submitting three separate applications, one for each location they are proposing to operate. And all of these questions and the answers will be um, uploaded in an amendment. Um, and lastly, for more information, please reach out to Daniel at, at DFSS New Arrivals at cdfchicago.org. And any non programmatic questions, you can reach out to the e procurement hotline. Again, they're opening operating hours on Monday through Friday, 9 through 5. And the number is 312 744 4357. And their email address is customer support at cityofchicago.org. Um, that concludes our new arrival shelter operations RFP. A copy of this recording will be posted on the DFSS YouTube channel, along with the PDF of these PowerPoint slides. Um, There's one question that just came in, uh, BJ, okay. do you want to address that one? Sure, yeah. So the question says uh, that I mentioned matching funds. Is there a matching fund requirement? Um, I will refer back, to, I will refer you back to the RFP. Um, I just be whether the RFP will, will actually list whether or not there are matching funds in some uh, in some DFSS RFPs, there are matching funds that are required. Um, and so I think some of the language that was used in this particular presentation uh, might have been pulled from uh, previous versions of webinars like this that we have done. So I would just uh, request that all applicants carefully review the RFP um, and, and uh, just stick to the budget and the budget proposal as they are uh, written there in the RFP. All right, again, the questions and answers 
would be in the amendment that will be sent out. Um, that it concludes our RFP webinar. Um, please enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you.